Good morning everyone. So today you and I are going to talk about Rust, Go, and whether or not these new exciting languages are going to threaten C++. Let's get into it. Now let's define some things first and foremost. Rust is Mozilla's new initiative to basically provide us with a safe system level language. That's in essence what it's there for. It is a new take on solving the sort of problems that we used to, we still have in C++ to help developers manage things such as thread, threads and asynchronicity and all of these things that are very complicated to get right. And then you have Go, which is Google's language virtually, and it has a lot of the same power and a lot of the same possibilities as Rust, they are slightly different and really optimized for different sort of things. But in theory, there are a lot of things that you can do in Rust that you can still do in Go and so forth, but they're not actually, it's only until very recently where I see the, the distinction between the two, because I originally thought that, yeah, you know, they're pretty much the same thing, but they're actually not. They are the use case for Rust is more optimized to actual system level language type of things. One of the most important things that you can virtually take away from Rust or one of the projects that Rust is being used for right now is that it's actually starting to find itself into the Mozilla browser code. Now the Mozilla browser is of course made in most, mostly C++ and there are small bits here and there that are now starting to be switched out for Rust. And I think that's pretty exciting. And then you have Go, where the most, I suppose, famous project that is using Go is Docker and Kubernetes. And although it is using Go in order to you know, achieve its goal as a system, as a application virtually, it's not really doing the sort of same thing. So. On these two languages, I would say that Go's original intention may have been to be something of a system level language, but it's not really optimized for that sort of thing. It is not really meant to, or rather it's not optimized to build, like if you wanted to build an operating system, you would not build that in, well, you, they are, there are people who are like writing bootloaders and other st stuff of that nature in Go, but you can write operating systems in JavaScript. So. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's designed to do that sort of thing. Anywho, these two languages are, I think, very exciting. They're bringing something new, fresh to the table. And now the question, because, because I have been doing a little bit of research ahead of time, and I've been trying to figure out whether or not C++ is still worth learning. And this is what I've found. And I think that Deep down in my heart, I always knew that this was going to be true. C++, just, just to find some things, is roughly 30 years old now. It is the language that most of the operating systems that you use, a lot of other languages like, for example, JavaScript and so forth, like these languages are still depending on C++ in order to do its job. Most of the browsers are still done in C++. C++ is the language that, well, let's take the words of Bjarne and Strosup, the inventor of this language, and just let's just define things according to what he's, like, he has, uh, well, I'm not going to claim that this is exactly what he said, but I, did, I have watched a few videos with him. And virtually the idea of C++ is that you, this is this type of language that you use when you need things to be bl as fast as they humanly can be with just a slightly nicer experience above C with some useful abstractions. And it's designed to be the sort of language where you need it, you use it in order to write something that needs to be around for decades. This is the sort, you use C++ to write the sort of code that is going to be around forever and be depend, depend, you can depend on this code. Because if you think about it, and I think he, his example was very nice, if you have all these different, let's say, 
freighting companies and uh, other companies who have machines such as you know boats or planes or whatever you can't really <laughs> change the code all that much you deploy it once and then it needs to just work for years and years and years and years that's the sort of language that c++ is and it is by far and wide the biggest industry standard that we have so if you are looking to learn the most powerful language in the world, C++ is the language for you. So now the question comes, all right, are we going to start switching over to Rust or Go or something of that nature? And this is my take on matters. I believe that C++ has never ever been a contender for network level programming. What do I mean by that? I mean that it does. It used. It might have been the case once, it, once upon a time, that you had to basically do this sort sort of thing in C++. But it was never really intended to to be a heavyweight champion of network-based programming or web programming and so forth. It's a system-level language. It's designed to do something very specific, and that's where I kind of feel that Go is most likely going to go. It's the of all these three languages, Go is really the only language that is optimized to do web-based programming or network-based programming. So if you want to make a web server or you want to do microservices or all of this stuff, it very naturally becomes a thing that Go will do. And so Go isn't really a contender to face off, in my opinion, to face off against C++. And it's, as I said, until recently I really realized that it's not really a, a, a in opposition to Rust either. So that leaves Rust and C++. So is Rust going to fa face off against C++? In all honesty, no. I don't, I don't see that happening. I see that the reason why I don't see this happening is that Rust has... It's a very nice experience and I think it makes sense for a lot of things. But here's why it's not going to make C++ go away. C++ is an industry standard. It's been around for so, so many years. And most of the issues that you have with, with C++ and these things that makes the, makes the development experience nicer are still not being proven to outweigh the cost of migrating all this code over to, to something like Rust. Because yes, let's just think about it. Even Mozilla themselves, in their tech talks about Rust, uh, are virtually saying that, yeah, you, the, the browser is massive, like they, it, they have so much code in C++, and they are starting to use Rust in certain places, but they are not going to rewrite all that code into Rust. And that makes a lot of sense if you think about it. There are millions and millions and millions of lines, lines of code using C++. There would be, it, the cost of migrating that over to Rust would be immense. So that leaves us in the situation, all right, are we going to learn, start using Rust for new code and leave C++ behind? And I still think that, no, that's not probably going to happen. Because Rust, although it's being used, and it's, and it's still pretty young, it's still a little bit unrefined, and the most problematic thing for it is that there are no... It hasn't gotten that boom yet. It hasn't gotten that... There are two things that need to happen in general for something to get popular in, in the programming world. The first and foremost thing is that it needs a campaign of some sort. It needs an advocate such as Google, which is pro they are probably the best at this, that pushes the language. And then it needs, and so it needs a healthy community with a lot of it, UX is like, or developer experience is the most key thing. Developers need to really like working in it and it's getting there, but it's not there yet. And the second thing is that they need success stories because nobody is, very few people have these, so especially in a reser more reserved environment such as system level languages where perfection is almost key to, what they're, to, what, to what's being built. Very few people are going to just jump on that train and be liberal and like risk. As I said, if, you, if you're working in an environment where you're building an operating system or you're building something that's going to be in a, in a plane or something, you, you don't have the luxury of risk. You don't take risks. I mean, 
you Im imagine how, say, the U.S. military, like their coders, when they are creating different algorithms for diff miss missile defense systems, do you think that they are taking risks? Don't think so. Or uh, yeah, maybe they are. Hope not. But I, I, you know, you never know. So, what my ruling is that I would actually like to, I want to. I want to take what Bjarne said in a very nice video, and I, this is still what I believe to be true. The biggest mistake of C++ is that they haven't, or rather the biggest limitation of C++ is that they haven't been able to clean it up. And this is coming from the creator of the language. He said that that's the thing that they haven't been able to do. They haven't been able to make C++ a nice development experience. But it's still, and I, I fully, fully support this idea, this is still the most powerful language we have. I would personally love if we, we just gave C++ the sort of attention it needs to be able to do all these things that we want to do with modern languages. Because if we could do that, then I would, at, at personally, I don't see any reason why we would use anything else. It's the most proven language, it allows you to do everything that you want to do. The issue is that it's a very horrible experience and error prone to do that still. So think about it. The language, the only problem with the language is the development experience. And very, like he is a genius in so many ways. I watched a video where he explained that from his perspective, the C++ community could benefit a lot from getting more JavaScript people into the folds. Because when it comes to development experience, arguably JavaScript is one of the biggest communities for that sort of thing. Development of tools and community. Ruby is up there as well, but JavaScript people are very into development experience. And that would be great to get that into C++, because trust me, if I had to choose a single language to stick by and use for the rest of my life, it would be C++.